What is going on boys? Today I want to give you guys my favorite strategies, tips, and tricks to help you win your fantasy hockey leagues throughout the season. This is how I was able to win almost 80% of my weeks in fantasy hockey so far. So let's dive right into it. Sometimes whether you win or lose a fantasy hockey week comes down to who had more games, you or your opponent. With that in mind, the first strategy I want to tell you guys about is to make sure you use all of your ads every single week to maximize your games. I know fantasy hockey can be a lot of work, but doing this will give you a massive edge against your competition. So let me give you some strategies on how to use your ads properly. One potential streaming strategy is to utilize two open roster spots, meaning you always have two guys on your team that you can drop. I will preface this by saying if your team is stacked and you can't afford to drop certain players, and this might not be the best strategy, especially early on into the season. However, I think it's really useful for maximizing your games and winning in your weeks. It's a reason why I like doing two for one or three for one trades so I can open up an extra streaming spot. By having two droppable players on your roster, you'll always be able to add a player for the entire week with a good off night schedule. During some weeks, you're gonna have some players who only play two games or some players who only play on your heavy nights, which is going to hurt your total amount of games for that week. If some of these players are middle of the pack and not worth holding on to long term, you can consider dropping them and picking up a guy who instead has four games and three off nights that week. I should note that before you add a player for the entire week, make sure you check your schedule and see which nights you can fit players into. Regardless if you use a one or two open roster spot strategy, one strategy I suggest you use is streaming players that have back to back games. Instead of adding a player for one night multiple times a week, Week, add players with bat to backs. For example, you can pick up a guy on Monday who plays Monday and Tuesday, drop him on Wednesday, and then find a player who plays Wednesday and Thursday. You can do this rinse and repeat, and you're going to get two games with each ad, so it's going to help you out a ton. This option may not always be available depending on how you can fit guys into your lineup, but when the opportunity presents itself, you need to utilize it. The last strategy to maximize your games is making an ad on Sunday for your next fantasy week. You should only do this if you have a comfortable lead over your opponent and don't need to use that last ad. This will allow you to gain an extra game for your upcoming fantasy week, meaning extra points that can give you the win. If you use these strategies, you will maximize your games and in turn maximize your fantasy points. You could potentially gain five to 10 games every week using these strategies, so make sure you try them out. It could lead you to the fantasy playoffs. With that being said, you guys should check out my weekly schedule guide videos. I talk about the teams with the most off nights, the teams with the least amount of games, and I also break down the streamers that you should add for the entire week. So make sure you guys check that out by following the strategy and watching those videos. It's gonna help you a lot. The second thing that you're gonna wanna do is pay attention to power play lines. This is especially important early on in the season when there are a lot of moving pieces teams are trying to figure out what works what doesn't work the website that i use to track power play lines is daily faceoff you can check all the nhl teams on there but i personally find twitter slash x to be much more reliable because it's up-to-date information what you're going to want to do is make sure you follow some key fantasy hockey accounts like my own at fired up fantasy i follow these i keep up to date with the power play changes and i tweet about them so make sure you do that but you could also search up the player that you're looking to find info on for example search up sergachev pp1 on on Twitter, go to latest, and then you'll be able to find up-to-date information on what type of lines are running in practice. You can also just search up the team like Lightning PP1, and you should get the lines there, whether it's the lines from practice or the lines from last night's game. And that's gonna help keep you up to date with all the changes. The next thing I wanna talk about is paying attention to the waiver wire, especially early on in the season. That is how you find those gems. I made a video about potential gems that you can check out, but I will be making videos every week on which players that you should add, so stay tuned for that. But guys, we know that waiver wire players have the potential to be league winners. I still remember picking up Timo Meyer two years ago in my home league, and he was absolutely incredible. Another player that comes to mind is Tage Thompson. There are many more players that were on the waiver wire in the last couple of seasons that ended up being extremely valuable. So it's probably going to be the same situation this year. There are potential league winners sitting on your waiver wire right now that you don't know about yet. So you want to identify those players and either make an early ad or pay very close attention to their production. Someone is going to bite. So personally, I want to get ahead of the curve and find these guys and add them before somebody else catches on. Players that come to mind include Mike Matheson, Seth Jarvis, Quirrell Marchenko, Kirby Doc, Barrett Hayden. These guys have a very low roster percentage, so you might want to consider picking them up. I will be making videos every week talking about players that you should add on the waiver wire, so check those out too. There are guys that have massive potential that I want to pay very close attention to. The next thing I want to talk about is trading strategy. Trading can be a lot of 
fun. There is a lot of risk to it early on in the season, but there's also a lot to gain. So let's break this down, guys. First off, you need to identify your team's strengths and weaknesses. Are you weak on goalie? Are you weak on defense? You need to fill the holes that you have in your roster, and you can do this by making trades. This is where you're going to want to identify your league mate strengths and weaknesses, figure out which positions they are weak at, whether it's forward, defense, or goalie. Let's say your defensemen are really stacked or you have a surplus of defensemen. Find the team that is thin at defense. Maybe you need a goalie and you can make a deal work. One thing to consider is that if you're stacked with scarce positions like defensemen and goalies, you may want to wait a little bit until your league mates get desperate and then you might be able to get a better offer. Another thing that you must know when you're making trades is that doing two for one trades or three for one trades is absolutely elite. The reason why this is so elite is because you can replace the extra players that you traded away for players that are sitting on your waiver wire. You can find some gems on the wire and you're going to find guys that are of comparable value to the extra guys that you traded away. And generally when I'm talking about these two for one trades, these three for one trades, I'm talking about trading forwards away. This is because forward is such a deep position. And like I said, you can find great value on the wire. Assuming the one player you're getting is a tier above the others, that one guy is going to help you win weeks versus those other guys that you're trading away. So try out the strategy. The last thing I want to talk about with trading is making calculated buy lows and calculated sell highs. I will say that there's absolutely some risk when you're doing sell highs. Guys like Eric Carlson, Bo Horvat, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins were potential sell high candidates last season, and they ended up being amazing throughout the year. But then you have guys like Dominic Kubelik and Nick Suzuki who were on fire early last season, but then cooled off. So you got to gauge whether you want to sell high on certain players. I think buying low is much safer than selling high. However, in an ideal scenario, you sell high on a guy that's going to cool off and you buy low on a guy that's going to bounce back. There's also a risk to buying low on players as well. There were a lot of players that struggled early on into last season that continued to struggle throughout the year. Guys like Jonathan Huberto, Alex DeBrincat. You did have some guys last year that struggled early on that did bounce back. Players like Jordan Kairou, if your league doesn't count plus minus, Kyle Connor, Alexander Barkov, Sam Reinhardt. Best way to identify buy lows and sell highs is looking at shooting percentage. If a guy has an inflated shooting percentage, then you know that it's probably going to come down. You can also find players that have a very low shooting percentage compared to their career rate and target those guys in trades. There's no guarantee certain players are going to cool off or bounce back, but comparing career rate to current shooting percentage is one way Way I like to identify these targets. And another thing that you can do is look at advanced stats like expected goals and some other luck metrics. So with all that being said, yes, there are some risks to doing buy lows and sell highs. Some guys are not going to pan out. Sometimes you're going to sell high on a guy and he continues with his production. You have to make a calculated risk and take a chance on some of these trades. The last strategy I want to give you guys is to not panic on players early in the season. I understand it's frustrating when you spend high draft capital on a player and they're underperforming. I understand the temptation to trade them away. I also understand the temptation to drop certain players. I get it. However, if you're basing all of this off a very small sample size, like five or six games, then it's probably going to cost you. Sometimes a team just hasn't developed chemistry yet. Sometimes luck just doesn't bounce your way. There's a number of reasons why a player could be underperforming, and it doesn't mean that they're going to underperform the whole season. One key indicator is shooting percentage. If you see a player's shooting percentage is extremely low compared to their career rate, there's a good chance it's going to bounce back. I also like to look at the splits of certain players. A guy like UC Saros always starts off slow. You can check out his splits on Hockey Reference. I do have my concerns about Nashville. Their defensive core is pretty tough. However, historically, we know Saros starts off slow, so you may not want to sell him for pennies. With that being said, there is an argument that some players you do want to trade before it's too late. Sometimes the writing is on the wall and you want to trade them before their value tanks too much. This can be hard to predict, so I wouldn't suggest doing it, but if you are knowledgeable about hockey and you find a certain situation with a player to be concerning, then you have to make that decision yourself. To sum things up, whether your concerns are legitimate or not, do not overreact in the first two weeks. Be patient with certain players. Monitor the players that you have concerns with, but don't go ahead and drop and trade some players that you had faith in a week before the season started. In my videos, I will be updating you guys with my takes on certain players, what you should do with them. But for now, stay put. It's only a couple of games into this season and we'll see how it all plays out. Finally, boys, I want to give you my picks tonight for Drafters Fantasy Sports. If you guys like gambling, you can sign up using referral code Fired Up, And when depositing a minimum of $20 using promo code code fired up they will match it 100 up to 100 dollars it's a super good deal guys gamble responsibly the link is in the description in the pinned comments below and you can also sign up on ios or android all right boys that's the end of the video make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel and i will catch you in the next one